Religious and non-religious debates will go on endlessly because they have different criteria by which they judge the truth. Non-religious believers or non-religious followers believe that evidence, mainly empirical evidence, is the best way of deciphering the truth, while by contrast, religious followers, Christianity, Islam, Santaism, attest that faith, mostly experience, feeling, and anecdotal evidence is the best way of deciphering the truth. But the bottom line is, there is no way of convincing either side which belief is correct because we reach the a priori, the baseline for a belief. If a religious person were to question an atheist about a god, then the atheist would say, what if Santa Claus? What if Apollo? What if any other crazy idea? Well, then religious person would have to make a remark with the counter-argument, well, you cannot disprove it. The atheism will respond, can you disprove Santa? Can you disprove anything that doesn't exist? The debate will end there because the criteria for judging the belief has not changed despite the argument. Religious people will still believe that evidence is not reliable, and a non-religious person will still believe that evidence is the best way to go, and that anecdotal evidence is not reliable. One side is already convinced, probably by birth, that there is more to life than what meets the eye, while the other is already convinced that there is possibly more than that meets the eye, but we don't know without evidence. Both sides already think they're right, and so they have no reason to change their methods of judging the truth. Being an atheist, I attest that evidence is the best way to go, but there is always a possibility that God may exist, or perhaps Santa Claus, or Apollo. But we can't know that. Now, religious people may say, you know, you, we feel it. I know to myself that he exists, but that has no implication on the truth. Richard Feynman said, if you don't like how the world is, go somewhere else. Maybe a universe that is more friendly, more beautiful, something that matches closer to what you believe. But we live in this world, and we have to accept it as the truth. Now, of course, I'm not saying really all religious people believe in believe just to feel good. Of course, many, including the people at my church, believe it strongly believe it as the truth. Their beliefs, no matter how irrational to me or to themselves, are reinforced by circular arguments. Now, if they believe that their own beliefs are irrational, that perhaps there's a re perhaps there's a possibility that God does not exist, then doubt flows into their mind. They have already been taught at a very young age a particular counter-argument that solves this problem of doubt. They are taught never to question God and that doubt is the work of the devil. Now this automatically switches them their understanding that Yes, there is a God, and there is a devil, a priori, and thus erases their doubt. Now this happens with everything. If there is a doubt about the existence of God, all they have to do is recall this counter-argument that yes, there is, there, they will doubt, but that is merely the work of the devil. So, you know, there's, there's, this, is, this is something you cannot escape. It's a cycle. If you doubt God, you are brought back to the belief of God. If you believe in God, then you will continue to believe in God. Now, the only way to break this cycle is through drastic change. An ability to question reality without something stopping them. It's like a, car a counter-argument based on the argument itself. Now, on a different note, I came across a quote by a friend of mine, whom I will not mention, and he or she said, We live by faith, not by sight. Now, obviously, being an atheist, and one who truly values evidence, empirical evidence, over anecdotal or emotion, emotional evidence, I strongly do not agree with this statement. We live by faith, not by sight. We live by faith the faith in Santa Claus, not by sight. 
not seeing Santa Claus. Now, the amount of thumbs up this person, this friend got, is rather, it really shows how relig how much support a person can get for such a uh, childish statement. Don't we? this this supports what I said previously about a priori beliefs. She or he already believes that we live by faith and not by sight, and so there is nothing we can do to convince her otherwise. Otherwise, it would bring us to the circular argument, like as I stated previously. Now, we live by faith, not by sight, is the motto of all true religious people. Religious people of Christianity, Muslims, or Islam, Greek, whatever other religions out there. But the problem with this thing is, is that it does not prove one religion to be true over the other. We can all live by faith, not by sight. But it's a, it's a, meaningless, it's a meaningless quote. How do you know one is true and the other is false? We can't. And so anyone who agrees with this statement can only live ignorantly. They live by the ignorance that their faith is the one true faith. Because they cannot see the similarities between other religions. And they cannot question because they have taught themselves not to question.